Okay, so if you read the title, you know what's going on. Taking a break from the SR20 car, which is right here. And working on the stock practice car, beater car, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't have much storage in my iPhone, so this video is going to be flipping back and forth between decent iPhone footage and garbage GoPro footage. So we'll see how that turns out. But if you can see behind me, uh, we are going to start turboing the uh practice car which is a stock unopened m52 and it's going to be on a stock ecu so the plan is to just run it uh with this setup at uh, eight to ten pounds on pump gas uh see if it lasts at all and if it does i'm gonna leave it if it doesn't uh we'll move to the next step which is the standard mls and uh, decompression plate which is the go-to i don't really care if it blows up but if it works, that would be awesome. Good wastegate from tile, a good tubular manifold, and then just the uh, an old turbo I have laying around. So it's a TDO 620G from Kinagawa. It's a bit on the smaller side, especially for a, an engine of this displacement and size. This was on my SR20, and it was pretty laggy on that, but uh, on an M52, especially at stock compression and being an NA motor, it's going to probably boost super early and that's where you run into problems so yeah we'll see if it gives me any issues but it, like i said just eight or ten pounds uh aiming for high twos to 300 wheel on pump gas and hopefully reliable i know there's plenty of people who've done it on e85 but that's not really available uh, i'm just gonna try to leave it on a pump gas tune on a stock ecu as well and then we'll see if we have any problems. So yeah, gonna go ahead and start, see how far I can get today. FYI, uh, I completely forgot there's uh, factory spot welds on that, so I definitely didn't just wrestle that for the last 30 minutes. Yeah, back to uh, taking this apart. Now it's time for the worst part of this entire process, 
and that is taking the exhaust manifold, the stock exhaust manifold out. Uh, I think it's 24 nuts and studs. Of course, this is a Canadian car, so every single nut and stud will be rusted or seized. So it's probably gonna take me an hour or two to take it off. I'm not gonna film it. I'm just gonna skip ahead and start recording again once that's out of the way. Here's what the uh, nuts and studs look like, in case you're curious. Should be uh, pretty fun to take out. I know I said I was gonna keep it uh, stock head studs earlier, but managed to snag a deal on some head studs last minute for a third of the price and it's brand new. So figured might as well pop these in one at a time. I'll get to it after the manifold's on, but yeah, it was a good find. So might as well use it. Finally got the crusty manifolds off. That took absolutely forever, and this is probably the worst job on a um, Rust Belt E36, I guess I could say. Took way longer than expected. Snapped a couple studs. Alright, so I'm going to start pulling these exhaust studs out. I have uh, new ones and new nuts, so pull those out. Hopefully it all goes smoothly, and then I can slap this turbo manifold on. See how we're doing with exhaust room for exhaust and wastegate and things like that so the reason i'm pulling all the studs out is because the studs that are going back in are actually these um e90 i think they're m50 or no sorry n54 um manifold studs so you see they have like a little uh torx inverted torx it's like an e7 i think on the end of it so they're easier to put in and out and they're actually shorter so it'll be easier to get these nuts on a very little amount of clearance on the turbo manifold so yeah brand new copper nuts and these shorter studs yeah pro tip if you're putting a turbo manifold and 54 studs i hear are the way to go haven't tried them myself so we'll see how they fit okay so it looks like it's actually working surprise so that's the first one out and about 23 or whatever left 20 something should be fine okay ignore the mess but i've got the manifold on you can see it uh not completely bolted in but i just wanted to kind of mock up things and see what we're dealing with so the turbo placement's okay uh we still have a little bit of room and this housing is going to get rotated so that it uh the piping goes from here underneath and then around to the intercooler uh, wastegate's okay as well. We're just gonna go probably straight down. Uh, I was thinking of going up, but um, I think this will be fine. Just go down and shoot it towards the ground there. The only real concern I have now is uh, the turbo sizing. So this is a uh, TO620G with an eight centimeter housing. So it was specced originally for my SR. So I think it's gonna spool extremely early on this setup especially since it's stock compression too. And it's not, it doesn't have a decompression plate or anything. So I've been looking at the forearms and stuff and I think the 3071 or 3076 is probably a good size. So I'm gonna look at what options I have for that. Probably go with a 76, slightly larger. And again, we also are on pump gas here. So I don't know if you have uh, any recommendations, leave them in the comments. Also picked up these wheels for pretty cheap to use as steers. They're a uh, slightly narrower diameter. They're eight, so I can get away with more wheel clearance and also less camber. So I'm gonna dial out this camber and lower it a bit. Don't have to deal with all that wheel radius issues. So yeah, that's it for this one. Um, like, comment, subscribe, I guess. Uh, any tips you have on turboing these things, leave them in the comments. Get this car out there and uh so i guess that's it for this um yeah leave a comment if you have any tips and that's it